The atmosphere has been changing rapidly over the past couple of months, transitioning from a strong El Nino to now developing into a La Nina as we work over the next couple of months. It's also leading to some pretty big changes in our weather patterns across the globe. We've already been seeing heat waves across the eastern portion of the country as we've worked through this past week, and more changes are on the horizon and more heat as well as we go throughout the summer months. In this video, we're going to talk about what La Nina is going to mean for the pattern ahead and how exactly it actually forms. If we take a look at the oceanic waters across the globe right now, you can see that it's pretty lit up. It's very warm across a good portion of the globe compared to normal temperatures. But right along the equator there, just off the western coast of South America, we've started to see some cooler than normal waters develop over the past few months. In fact, again, we've seen a huge transition from an El Nino to a La Nina. These temperatures have cooled more than two degrees Celsius over the past several months and are expected to continue to cool as we work over the next few months. This is all related to an atmospheric circulation that develops right along the equator. We get what we call trade winds, winds that are coming off of South America from the east and moving strongly to the west. It pushes all of the warmer ocean waters all the way out towards Australia, typically it leads to increased rain and storm and even sometimes flooding threats out in Indonesia and Australia, and ultimately develops a circulation across the globe. These winds will ultimately allow for rising air near South America. As that air rises, it leads to a circulation of westerly winds moving well above the surface up into the jet stream, and these winds impact our jet streams all across the globe. It impacts where our high and low pressures end up, and ultimately our weather patterns. Now, one of the ways that we can track and see whether we are really feeling La Nina conditions is by something we call the global winds. And the global winds is just a measure of whether winds across the globe are stronger than normal or weaker than normal. This process takes time. As we start to develop a La Nina, it takes a while for the entire atmosphere to respond to La Nina conditions along the equator. Typically, when you have stronger than normal winds across the globe, that's more El Nino-like. It means that the atmosphere is going to resemble that more of an El Nino rather than a La Nina. But as soon as we hit June, and especially after the first week of June, our global winds dropped from a positive state, more El Nino-like forcing, to more La Nina-like forcing. And in fact, now we're looking to go more than two standard deviations below normal for our global winds. Our global winds are going to be much weaker than normal, which means that we're going to be feeling strong La Nina forcing as we work over the next several weeks and into the month of July. If we take a look at years within the past 20 years or so that have had a La Nina or developing La Nina in June, July, and August through the summer months, you can see that it tends to favor increased heat above normal warmth risk and more heat dome risk especially across the eastern U.S. and out towards the Midwest in the summertime. There are several years that we can look at that are going to resemble something close to this. If we take a look at some of the model data right now out through the 4th of July, the pattern is resembling these very, very closely. Right now, the upper level setup resembles that of a La Nina. We're going to be feeling the atmosphere responding to La Nina-like conditions over the past couple of weeks. And so what does that mean? It means more opportunities for heat wave. It means an active jet stream further to the north. In La Nina years, as we go throughout the summer months, these orange colors that you see on the map that indicate that the jet stream is further north. Your stronger than normal winds are more across the northern tier of the U.S., while weaker than normal winds develop across the southern U.S. and into the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. Keep that in mind for a note that we'll have on hurricane season later in this video. But as the jet stream shifts north, it sends the moisture opportunities further north, more across the northern plains and the upper Midwest, and it tends to allow heat to expand across much of the central and eastern portion of the country, which is what we've already been talking about over the past few videos. La Nina is directly responsible for the heat wave that developed across the eastern part of the country, that ring of fire pattern that we talked about that's led to flooding across parts of the north central United States, and again, that heat dome that is expanded across the southern and eastern part of the country and which will be responsible for more heat across the southern tier of the U.S. over the next few weeks. It also is going to increase those severe weather threats. We've already seen an active severe weather season so far this year, 
and we have more storm cluster opportunities across the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, as we work over the next several days. In terms of what this could mean for hurricane season, the weaker than normal winds that typically develop in a La Nina over the Gulf of Mexico and over the Caribbean will typically allow for more hurricanes to form. When you have less wind and less wind shear, it keeps those thunderstorms that develop in the, in the Atlantic Ocean very organized, and it allows them to be able to strengthen and intensify easier. It's why a lot of times in La Nina years, you can have a more active than normal hurricane season. In fact, four of the five most active hurricane seasons since 1990 have come in La Nina years or developing La Nina years, not dissimilar from 2024.